So what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. And in this episode, we're going to talk about an interesting question, which is why I don't invest in index fund. So I just got off a call with one of my subscribers. You know, he scheduled a call with me and to protect his identity, I'm going to name him Bob. So Bob was you know, using some sort of backtesting software basically to analyze different fund performance. And he came across a fund called QQQ. So for those of you who are familiar with ETF funds, uh, you will realize that QQQ is a very successful technology index fund over the last 10 years. And the average return is 20%. So I'm going to kind of walk you through our conversation um, for around 15 minutes, kind of summarize what we talked about and sharing my view on why I don't invest in index fund personally and why I prefer to pick individual stocks instead. So before we start, I just want to celebrate another four case study within Investing Accelerator where Mike made 100% from Intel in seven weeks, Serena made 22% from Intel in 4.5 months, Caitlin made 95% from Intel in 24 days, and Alan made 92% in five months from Chef. So congratulations to all four of you. Uh, these are great success stories, and I look forward to your next successful investment. So back to my example, QQQ. So I got off the phone with the subscriber, and I drove to lunch. So I had to think about you know, our conversation, what he meant, and you know why I don't invest in index fund and I think this is such an important question that deserves its own video so here we are and QQQ was actually the main index fund we discussed so if I scroll down here you will see that they mainly have technology stocks which includes Apple Microsoft Amazon Facebook so these are really the big companies right and you see Google Tesla here um, so on and so forth. So if you analyze the individual stock holdings, you will realize that they all have a fairly strong trend. Uh, they are growth oriented. Uh, most of them, I think all of them here right now are profitable. Uh, Tesla used to be not profitable, but I think recently they turned a profit. So they are profitable as well. So this 10 stocks actually represents 51% of the total assets. So that is great. And if you look at the performance, which let me just pull up the performance here, here you'll find the year to date increases 6% for QQQ. One year is 43%. Now this is a special year because it's COVID. So the market actually went up quite a bit. And if you look at three years is 26% per year, five years is 25% and 10 years is 20%. So you can see for the recent years, the return is slightly higher. And as you look at a longer and longer period of time, the return is starting to decrease, which you can see the long term average here is 20%. So when my subscriber was doing the calculation and he was like, Eric, if I started investing, you know, 10 years ago and instead of working with uh, my mutual fund company, uh, which I will not name, uh, which he only got around six, seven percent, and I invested my money into QQQ. I would make so much more money. Um, I would basically, I think it was around six times or five times as money uh, in the last ten years. And I was like, that is true. And uh, he pulled up his calculator. He did all the calculation. He said, "Wow, that's fantastic." And he asked me, "Well, Eric, why don't you invest?" in, you know, let's say QQQ, you're already getting 20% here. So when I thought about his question, initially I said, well, to me, it just makes a lot more sense to pick stocks. And the reason is because when you are looking to invest in the market, you can see the last 10 years of performance for QQQ is 20% per year. That is great. So the question is, if you look at QQQ's price today, Will you be comfortable to invest in QQQ for another 10 years? And that is the real question. And at that point, Bob, which is his fake name, he laughed and he said, isn't that the million dollar question, Eric? And we had a, another couple of minutes of chat uh, on the phone for a while. And then uh, in the end, he needs to do a little bit more research. So afterwards, you know, I thought about this question and I decided, you know, I should have a more elaborate response because I actually have a very, very logical response on why I don't invest in index fund. 
So when you're looking at you know this kind of return, 20% per year, that's actually great. You're actually beating the market and it actually requires you to not have that much knowledge at all and just have faith that the next 10 years will be the same as the last 10 years, which means QQQ will continue to get you 20% per year uh, on an annual basis. Now, of course, this seems straightforward and at the same time, it removes a lot of the decision making out of your hands. So the only thing you need is the faith to believe that QQQ will be doing the right thing and the underlying holdings will continue to grow at 20% per year. So to me personally, if I want to entrust something for 10 years, I want to do a lot more research in it. I want to have a lot more control to get this 20% or more. And in my case, of course, my target is 30% per year. So it's actually higher than QQQ. So I think if for the next 10 years, I make individual decisions, you know, every year I only invest in five to 10 companies. I do my research. I know why I'm investing in them. And I understand the company, financials, technical, news, all of that together, and I use the right amount of profit multiplication, I will be a lot more confident and I will sleep a lot better. And I think that is really the key difference. There's actually nothing wrong investing in QQQ and hold it for 10 years if you're willing to give up that control. But because I'm blessed with the curse of knowledge of knowing how to get 30%, I will not personally invest in QQQ anymore because I think it is at a high price. I think if there is a correction coming up anytime soon, by giving up that control, it actually puts me as a worse off position. Because if you have been studying my investing strategy, uh, which is kind of in the link below, the first link, uh, there's a four hour webinar, then you'll realize that I'm actually a value investor. Even though my growth for the portfolio is around 30% or higher, you'll realize I'm a very value-driven uh, investor. And what that really means is that I focus on discounts. So if you can buy a shirt anytime throughout the year, I would buy on Christmas Boxing Day. So that's the easiest way to understand my investing strategy. And a lot of people don't understand, you know, when is a good time to buy a stock? When is it a good time to get in? Well, the short answer is Christmas, when it is on a discount. But well, the next question is, how do you know it is Christmas? Well, to that answer, then you need to watch the training below, which I explain the free chart template, and I also explain a little bit more detail in terms of how I invest in the market. But by combining technical analysis and fundamental analysis, and by having that control over my financial decision versus entrusting into something like, for example, QQQ or VOO, um, I feel a lot more comfortable about my investing decision. And because I know I make every single one of these decisions, I know I wouldn't regret it. Um, so I think there's a lot of, you know, missed opportunities, you know, when people look back in the last 10 years and they see, you know, Amazon going to $1,000, $2,000, $3,000, and they will feel a lot of regret because they didn't invest in it. And they will tell themselves, well, Eric, only if I knew I would invest and put all of my money into Amazon, Bitcoin, GameStop, AMC, you name it. And I think it's that kind of hindsight that really creates regret and unhappiness within us. And if you make the decision yourself, then there's really no regret because you make the decision, you took the risk, you did your research and you understand what kind of situation you're getting into. So that's why even when I look back for the last five, 10 years, I'm very glad that I went on the journey to learn investing by myself because I learned how to make the right decision. I learned how to avoid certain risk. I learned how to avoid the mistakes even though it took me around eight years to master investing, but I still learned and went through all the trouble and trial and error. Now, of course, if you are 40, 50, 60 years old, I don't really recommend you to go through the trial and error phase because it did take me eight years, which, you know, if at, at that age, you want to master investing quickly. 
Uh, back then, when I first started investing, I was around 18 years old. So I had a lot of room for trial and error. But when you're 40 plus, then I would consider, you know, accelerate that progress, find yourself a good mentor before you go and experiment with real money. Because at this stage, if you lose that money, it's really hard to get it back. Plus, you need to compound. So the more time you spend on trial and error, then less the number of years you get to compound, which in turn reduces your retirement savings in the last couple of years, which delays your retirement and so on and so forth. You get the idea. So this is kind of um, a long-winded answer to why I don't invest in mutual funds or index funds. It's coming down to a very simple concept, control. I want to be the one responsible for making that decision. I want to take on the risk knowing exactly what the risk is. If I invest in QQQ today, right now it's at an all-time high, obviously, and following my own philosophy of finding discounts and deals, I would not be able to bring myself to invest in QQQ, even though the historical performance is great. And of course, I have a lot of faith in the holdings here. Uh, if I just scroll down, you can see Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, NVIDIA, PayPal. These are all great companies. I love these companies. But if I'm going to invest in QQQ, I would rather just go to the individual company's chart, analyze them, and find a good time to enter into these companies. So previously, I think a year or two ago, I actually invested in Facebook at a discounted price. And then I think I got over 50% out of it. Um, so that would be an example. Now, one of the interesting things is that if I can pull it up here for you, is the annual return. Now, this is kind of interesting because everyone is usually happy when they're making money, but nobody really thinks about the downside before they invest. Because if you look at this number, it feels like you make 20% every single year, which mathematically it is correct. But obviously, there's a lot of volatility within this return number. So you actually need to look at the annual return. Now, we're still in um, 2021, so you actually get the data from 2000, which is fantastic, which is what the dot-com crash is. So if you go to here, then you'll see that for 2000, 2001, and 2002, the stock price actually went down 36% per year. So if you invested from 1999 onwards up to today, you'll actually get 20% per year, but the first three years, you would have lost 36, 32, and 37%. That's like 90% of your portfolio. So you can see how traumatizing that can be, even if you are making the right decision. Because with hindsight, after 20-something years, you know you made 20% per year. But if you invested in QQQ in these three years, then hey, maybe you think you made the mistake and you don't think you're making money forever. Uh, but of course, it rebounded and until 2008, which is the housing market crash. So when you think about you know investing in QQQ, if you end up being very unlucky, meaning that you bought at 1999, you bought at 2007, just before the market crash, and you entrusted your faith, your money into this fund, are you able to hold on to these three years? Or will you be panicking and exit? And I think that's the real question. Because if you look at 2000 here, you can see it's 48%. But I know a lot of people that during 2020, they actually exited near the bottom and they didn't invest back. So they actually missed the opportunity. So when you think about investing in the fund, even though you're diversified across the 10 major tech companies in the market, you still have that risk. You're not immune to making losses. And when it starts to go down, you need to have some sort of faith or belief that it will come back up, which maybe you're able to justify to yourself but personally, for myself, I like to rely my decision based on fact and data. So I always look at the financials. I'll always look at technical news and all the factors together. 
and I try to be as data driven as possible. And the reason is because when you are a data driven investor, you make logical decisions. You rely on something that does not necessarily change that easily, which is the fact, the fundamentals, and you make your decision based on that. So today I might feel happy because I got some McDonald's. Tomorrow I might feel sad because I was I'm on a diet. That emotional swing will not impact my investment decision as much because my initial decision making relies on data. And once I do that, the next thing I do is I find a discount. So here you can see for QQQ, it doesn't really go on discounts that often. So if you look at the annual performance, it's actually very difficult to find discounts. But when you're looking at the individual stocks, it's much easier to find a discounted opportunities. And that's something you will not be able to pull off when you are investing in QQQ because when you're investing in something like QQQ where you're not getting that many discounted opportunities, there's actually a better approach to finding it at a discount, Like, which means you don't try to time the market. You just kind of invest on a monthly basis and have that faith that it will all work out in the end. So when you're looking at the last 10 years or so, there's barely a down year for QQQ. So that's why a lot of people are expecting there will be a correction soon. And here you can see when there is a correction, 2008, this is like drop of 40%. In 2001, two, and 2000, this is a drop of 90%. So you can see if that ever happens, which a lot of people are thinking will, including Warren Buffett, then a lot of people who invest in QQQ and the big tech will lose a lot of money. And for myself, the best way to protect myself against this kind of situation is really to start off by knowing how to invest, knowing how to find discounted stocks, and once you take care of that part, you'll be relatively protected from a downturn, so then if anything happens, you know you're making a conscious decision to diversify and be protected against any significant market crash. And like I said, the reason why I don't invest in index fund, it all comes down to control. And I want to be in control of my financial destiny. And if I made a good decision, great. If I made a bad decision, I learn from them and I keep going. And my target is 30% per year. And for the last five years, my return is actually higher than that, is around 47%. Um, so, so far I'm on track, if not a little bit ahead of schedule. So if you're interested in learning more about how I invest in the market, then you can get the four hour free training below. It's actually the first link in the description. So once you click on that, you can register for it. It's a four hour free training, so you can watch it. And if you're interested in investing accelerator, then you can schedule a call to chat with me. So I'll see you in the next video. And that's my detailed answer for you, Bob.